Hey everybody, so glad that you could join us for our Easter Sunday service online this morning. Uh, My name is Greg, I'm the lead pastor at Redeemer Alliance Church, and uh, I'm not at Redeemer right now, I'm at home. I'm at home probably like the rest of you are on this Easter Sunday morning. But hey, you know what, it doesn't matter uh, that we're at home all this morning because we're going to take, we're going to talk about the greatest event in human history and how it has the power to change each and every one of our lives, even right now in the midst of this COVID-19 situation. On Friday, we talked about Christ's death for us on the cross, that Jesus provides a cure for the infection of sin that each of us are infected with. This infection of sin in our lives affects every aspect of our lives in a negative and damaging way. When we're infected with sin with no cure, our relationship with God is non-existent. Our relationship with others suffers, and we ourselves suffer the damage of sin in our lives. Sin, by the way, is just anything that we do that is contrary to what God would want us to do in our lives. So, on Good Friday, Jesus dies on that cross for us. He's crucified for us to provide the once-for-all-time cure for our sin. After Jesus dies on the cross, his body is taken down, and he is placed in the tomb of a rich man named Joseph of Arimathea, And everyone goes home. The end. But it's not. You see, for pretty much every other human being throughout history who has died, and that's everybody who has died, that has been the end of their story. We are born, we live this life, and then we die. Our journey through this life doesn't continue. We can't add to our story any longer. That's it. But Jesus' life doesn't end with his death, because something unimaginably extraordinary happens. Let's look now at the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 1 to 10. This is what it says, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said, he, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. And now, go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. The women ran quickly from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. So this is a pretty incredible story, isn't it? This is a pretty incredible event that's taking place here. But I want to make something very clear right now. We are not just meant to read this, even be amazed by it, and then walk away from it. No, this is the greatest event in the history of the world. It's a world-changing event. And it has changed the world. It has. But it's also a life-changing event, too. So what I want to explore with you this morning is this. What does Jesus' resurrection do for us? What does it mean practically for us in our lives? Here's a few wonderful things that Jesus' resurrection does for us. First off, Jesus' resurrection confirms for us that everything he said and did was true. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone told me all sorts of things, some of which I didn't understand or believe, but they also told me, uh, that they would be raised from the dead as the ultimate proof that, that what they were saying to me was true, I would, of course, be skeptical at best. Who wouldn't, right? But if I then witnessed them being killed, and then three days later they appeared to me alive and well, and not some spiritual vision type thing, but in a physical body that I could touch, I would no longer be a skeptic. I would believe everything they said. I would have believed everything they said then, and I'd believe everything they said now in that moment. No one in the history of the world has ever foretold of their death and their resurrection. They may have talked about dying, but how many have talked about dying and then being raised from the dead? 
And even if someone in history has had said that after they died, they would be raised from the dead, there's no evidence that it actually happened. Right? But with Jesus, you have him making some pretty incredible claims that he's the Son of God, that he has the authority to forgive people's sins. He performs miracles, and he claims to be speaking what God has told him to say. On top of all of that, he foretells his death and his resurrection. Jesus is killed, yes. That isn't the surprising part. But then he is raised from the dead. Resurrection happens. Tim Keller, who was, a, a pastor, who, who was the former pastor of Redeemer Presbyterian Church in New York City, he wrote a book called The Reason for God, Belief in an Age of Skepticism. And this is what he has to say about Jesus' resurrection. If Jesus rose from the dead, then you have to accept all that he said. If he didn't rise from the dead, then why worry about any of what he said? The issue on which everything hangs is not whether or not you like his teaching, but whether or not he rose from the dead. Listen, it is very common for people to say that Jesus was a good teacher, that he was a guru of sorts, that he was full of wisdom and full of love and just a, an all-around nice guy, but really nothing more than that, right? The problem with saying that is that the resurrection of Jesus shatters that idea that Jesus was just a good teacher or even a really good person. No, we can't just say that about Jesus and walk away in light of this great truth. Jesus was, ra Jesus was raised from the dead. That fact, that historical fact, forces us to make a concrete decision about who Jesus really is. Either we can continue to deny the truth of the resurrection, or we can choose to realize and acknowledge that Jesus is so much more than just a good man or a good teacher. Jesus' resurrection is the ultimate proof to us that we can believe in who he is, who he says he is, the Son of God, the Savior of the world. What we read in the Gospels, those being the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what we can have an incredible confidence in believing that what Jesus said and did actually happened and is true based upon the truth of his resurrection. The second thing that Jesus' resurrection does for us is it, is it affirms for us the truth that there is life after death. You know, there was a show on the Discovery Channel years ago uh, entitled The World's Top 10, uh, The World's 10 Greatest Mysteries. It was highly enjoyable. Uh, it, and it counted out from 10 the greatest mysteries in the world that we have yet to solve, like uh, do aliens exist? Is Bigfoot for real? Is there really a, a city of Atlantis? But the last mystery, the number one mystery that the show claimed no one knows the answer to, is the question of if there is life after death. Obviously, there are many different cultures and religions that believe in life after death in some way, shape, or form. But the, but the show argued this. We really can't know for sure. But given the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we can know the truth about life after death because Jesus experienced it himself, having been raised from the dead. Jesus knows what life after death looks like, and we can trust him to lead us into eternal life after we die. Jesus says these words in the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verse 25. He writes, he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. That's a pretty bold promise, a pretty bold claim. But Jesus was raised from the dead. So we can know that there is life after death. And in knowing that, we can either have a, ha, experience life after death being spent with God forever. And that's more wonderful than you and I can even imagine. Eternity with God. How incredible would that be? Will that be? Or we can spend forever apart from God after this life. Which the Bible calls eternal death. Which isn't a pretty image at all. Thirdly, the truth of the resurrection tells us this. There is hope for the world. It, the resurrection of Jesus proves that God has a plan for the world and that there is a hope made available to us through Jesus that everyone can know and experience. I don't know about you, but I think the world needs hope right now. You and I, you and I need hope right now. We live in a world 
that right now is filled with fear and worry and sadness and uncertainty. So many people are looking at the present situation with COVID-19 and are forecasting the long-term effects of it even now. And they see a future of loss and difficulty and suffering. And when we're looking at the future that way, and we're experiencing the present emotions associated with it, our sense of hope can greatly suffer. But I want to share with you now the great hope that the resurrection of Jesus Christ can provide each and every one of us with. Going back to the Bible, the book of Romans, this is what it says, Against its will, all creation was subjected to God's curse. But with eager hope, the creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. We were given this hope when we were saved. You see, the point that Paul's trying to make here is, is when we originally sinned against God, our relationship with God broke off and the world basically has been under a curse. It has suffered the curse of sin and suffering and death and decay. But what it's saying here in the book of Romans is that it's not always going to be this way. God loves the, love the, loves the world, but the world at present is not how God originally intended it to be. Death and pain and suffering were not in God's original plan. But now, through Christ, we've been given the great hope of not only resurrection for ourselves, but also for a new world as well. One that no longer includes pain and suffering and death, but perfect life, where God's will, His desire for His creation, His original desire for His creation, is implemented and will never change. The resurrection of Jesus is the beginning of God's plan to bring us back to the beginning. <laughs> when we walked with God in perfect relationship, without the presence of sin and suffering, of death and decay. Jesus' resurrection gives hope to this world. Our world, right? Especially in, in light of what the world is experiencing right now. His, Jesus' resurrection is the precursor for what we ultimately long for in our souls, freedom from death and decay, and life forever with God. This is what Jesus says to us in the Gospel of John, in chapter 16. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Jesus can say that because he's been, he, he knows he's going to be raised from the dead. Even though he'll suffer and die, he knows that God will raise him from the dead. And he's saying, he's saying to his disciples and to us today, look, I've overcome the world. So no matter what you face, no matter what you're going through, place your hope in me. Place your faith in me. I've overcome it. I won't let you down. You can trust in me no matter what you face. Another thing that Jesus' resurrection does for us is it not only affirms the truth of who Jesus is, it not only affirms uh, the, the, the truth of eternal life, it not only gives the world hope, but Jesus' resurrection is even more personal than that. Because Jesus invites us to experience him. Right? Our understanding of Jesus' resurrection isn't meant to end with some cerebral understanding in our minds, right? Okay, I read it in the Bible. Okay, I'm sure it's true. Jesus was raised from the dead. Great. No, that, that event, Jesus' resurrection is meant to change our lives and he invites us to experience it. If you read the Gospels, again, the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you will discover quite quickly and wonderfully how personal Jesus is. What a personable guy he was. How he, he invites people all the time to come to him and how his character is so full of love and compassion and grace. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 28, Jesus says this to all of us, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. We are invited to experience his rest and peace that comes from knowing Jesus. A good teacher can't promise us rest and peace if we come to them, right? But a risen Jesus can. One who is the Son of God can. When we take Jesus up on his invitation to come to him and follow him, we are then able to experience what it means to know him. And one thing that we can experience in knowing him is peace and rest. Peace and rest are the burdens of life. The stuff that all of us are experiencing right now, right? Fear, anxiety, worry, 
stress, ah, the burdens that can just weigh us down so much. Are you feeling weighed down today? Bring all of that to Jesus and ask him to lip, lift, up, lift up off of you those heavy burdens and fill you with his peace. You know, elsewhere Jesus says this, that he, he leaves us with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace that he gives us isn't like the peace the world gives, so we shouldn't be troubled or afraid. It's a peace that surpasses understanding. I don't know what the future holds. It's uncertain. But I know this. God knows. God knows the future. And if we've placed our faith in Jesus, our trust in him, he's worthy of it. And can, he can meet us right now where we're at and fill us with his rest and his peace, his comfort and his hope. Furthermore, in, in receiving Jesus' invitation to know him, we can be free from sin. We're invited to experience, to, we're invited to experience freedom from sin in our lives. On Good Friday, uh, we, we talked about how Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross cures us of the infection of sin in our lives and relieves us of the guilt and shame that we carry, that we can carry over our sins, right? Not only that, but Jesus seeks to give us the power and the desire to live a life from sin and the damage that it causes to us, others, and, and, and in our relationship with God. Jesus says this in John chapter 8, verse 36, So if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Jesus' resurrection reveals this great truth to us. If God has the power to raise Jesus from the dead, then God can also give us the power to be set free from sin in our lives. Oh, how does that sound? Especially those sins that weigh, that weigh us down so greatly with shame and guilt. Jesus has the power to forgive us of our sin through his death on the cross, and his resurrection reveals to us that God is able to give us the power to live a life free from sin. Elsewhere in the Bible, in the, in the book of Romans, it says this, The Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. The Spirit of God is given to everyone who places their faith in Jesus. And so the Bible says here that the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, we're talking about that right now, the Resurrection Sunday, that same power lives in us through the Spirit of God in us when we place our faith in Christ, if we've chosen to follow Jesus by placing our faith in Him. There's this new life available to you and I. In the same way that Jesus was raised from the dead into new life, we too are invited to experience a whole new life when we choose to follow Jesus and place our faith in Him. You know, in the Bible, there was a guy named Paul, kind of mentioned him earlier, who at one time didn't believe in Jesus at all. In fact, he thought that Christians and, and the church were a menace to society and needed to be eradicated. So he hunted them down and imprisoned them and sometimes worse. But Jesus spoke to Paul one day and it changed Paul's life forever because he came to know and experience Jesus in his life and he even chose to follow Christ. This is what Paul writes in the New Testament, which, is, which means all the writings that were written after Jesus came and died and was resurrected. Paul writes this in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. He says, so we have stopped evaluating others from a human point of view. At one time, we thought of Christ merely from a human point of view. How differently we know him now. <laughs> this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. How does that sound to you? You know, I got to tell you before, I, I, I've made mistakes in my life. I've sinned. Coming to know Jesus was the best decision I ever made, and he invited me to come to know him. See, Paul, he understood that his life had been divided into two distinct parts, before he knew Jesus and after he came to know Jesus. After Paul came to know Jesus, his life took a whole new, different, a whole new direction. In fact, he came to, to live a completely different life than he did before, a life that was pleasing to God in all that he did. Not so that he could try to earn his salvation, earn his ticket to heaven, but rather he sought to live a life that was honoring to God in response to the grace that God showed him through Christ. Jesus offers the same to you and I today. If you don't know Jesus, if you haven't placed your faith in him for the forgiveness of your sins so that you can have a relationship with God, he welcomes you to do that today. Why wait? Why not today? Today, 
you can experience what it feels like to be forgiven, to be set free from living a life where you're only living for yourself and not for God. Are you tired of that? You can experience the peace and the rest and the freedom that comes from knowing Jesus. God loves you so much that he was willing to give his only son to die for your sins and be raised to life and be raised to life from the dead so that God could give you a hope and a future and a peace and a joy that is more wonderful than you can imagine. I'm going to pray right now. I'm going to pray a prayer right now that you can follow along in praying in order to place your faith in Jesus and invite him into your life. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins. I acknowledge that your sacrifice on the cross enables me to be forgiven of all that I've ever done and even will do. God, I thank you that you love me so much that you've made a way for me to be with you. I freely receive Jesus' sacrifice on the cross for me. I thank you for it. And God, I thank you that I can enter now into a relationship with you. Lord, fill me even right now with your Holy Spirit. Fill me even right now with the peace and the joy and the rest and the hope and the power that comes from you, Jesus, so that I can live a life that's honoring to you, God, in all that I do. In your name, Jesus, I pray. Amen. If, hey, if you prayed that prayer, we would love to know about it here at Redeemer. You can, let us know, you can let us know right now through the Facebook chat and someone from Redeemer will connect with you. As well, if you just invited Jesus into your life by placing your faith in him, you can also email us at Redeemer. Uh, my email is greg, G-R-E-G, -E at RedeemerAlliance.ca. We also have another pastor on staff at Redeemer, Pastor Dylan. His email is dylan, D-Y-L-A-N, at RedeemerAlliance.ca. You can also message us through our Redeemer Alliance Church Facebook page. Whatever way you choose to reach out to us is great. And we'd love to hear from you and connect with you. For all of you who tuned in this morning, thank you so much. Just a few things that you, here's a few things that you can do to keep connected with us at Redeemer and so that we can keep connected together as we seek to journey with Christ, especially through these challenging times. First off, keep checking into our Redeemer Alliance Church Facebook page and message us on Facebook or email us through our website, RedeemerAlliance.ca. Secondly, uh, click to join the new Bible uh, reading plan right after th this service ends today. We're going to post on our Facebook page uh, the, a new Bible reading plan for you to follow, to join us in, and we can read along together and explore together and comment on uh, what we're reading together. So check out that link. It's going to be posted right after the service today. Finally, every week uh, th on Thursday evenings at 7.30 p.m., we're going to be doing uh, a, um, a Facebook uh, stream then, a Facebook live stream then. So we hope you can enjoy, you can join us in that. It, it, we do it for about half an hour. We talk about what we've been reading in the Bible reading plan. I talk about, hey, what's going on in the world and, and what is God saying uh, uh, to you and I? And that gives us just another chance for us to connect. Thank you again so much for joining us this morning. I trust and hope that you felt God speak to you this morning and that you have come to experience Christ maybe like never before in your life. Whether you just came to accept him today or you've been walking with Jesus for decades, I hope and pray that you just felt God speak to you and, and touch your life in a powerful way today. Jesus invites us to experience a new life in him, a life of peace, of hope, of joy, like no other. He promises us a future like no other. This is what the resurrection of Jesus does for us. Let's thank him again for all that he offers us to experience in him. Father, we thank you that you sent your son to die on that cross for us so that we could be forgiven of all of our sins. We thank you for the new life, Jesus, that you invite us to experience in you, through you. God, give us more of you. Draw near to us, Lord that we would feel and experience your presence more than ever. And Father, I pray again for those who maybe accepted Christ right in this moment today, that Lord, you would just give them too an overwhelming sense of your great love for them and your presence in their lives. Oh, thank you again, Jesus, so much. 
for all that you've done and are going to do in us and through us for your glory, God. In your name we pray. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite uh, Greg and Carla to, to lead us in a closing song.